is the Glass Cannon Network. talk about it. It's the elephant in the room that everyone at home is thinking about. Nobody wants to discuss it. Nobody wants to bring it out in the open on a live Twitch stream viewed by millions. <laughs> what is everyone's favorite Halloween candy? <laughs> <laughs> I was really worried. I was like, this is going to get weird. <laughs> am I going to have to just sabotage the stream in some way so we don't have to hear everybody's controversial answers to some hot topic? I'm just having a hard time with this question right now. Yeah. You only because get like, one. You mean like Halloween themed candy? Because like some candy is just tiny and then it becomes Halloween candy. <laughs> I'd like you, know, you to elaborate on this. Like a tiny <laughs> Twix. Right, right. Or like there's, a there's tiny like, Halloween Kat. candy is all candy. Fun size. You're talking about fun size. Yes. I feel like fun size is just a year round thing. Right. Okay. So like you're talking candy. about Halloween so, themed candy. I don't Troy, think I, that you think that is just, that's a gross oversimplification of the truth. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I'm not saying if your favorite Halloween candy when you were a kid or up until now, as you reach in there and you pull out a fun size fucking Twix and that's your jam, then that's your answer. That's it. <laughs> well, get one but, answer. But that, oh, geez. Like well, that's preposterous. One answer is preposterous. Yeah. That's all you get. I'll start. I'll, uh, and I'm I'd take venture it to the say. Table. I'd venture to say that one choosing one favorite is against the spirit of Halloween. Well, <laughs> I, I'm with you, Matthew. I'm with you. Well, I'll, all I remember is as a kid, when you dumped it out uh, at the end of the night, or sometimes you'd be like two buckets deep if you had a really good neighborhood, you dumped it out. The thing that I was most excited for is the same thing that I'm excited for now, and it's the thing that I now hand out to the children of my neighborhood. Circus just, peanuts. It's what you say, circus, circus, circus peanuts. peanuts. I actually like circus peanuts. <laughs> so do I. And a lot of people think they are disgusting. <laughs> they don't, uh, you know, they don't uh, promote like candy like we had as a kid that is just pure sugar. Like a yeah, and not peanut. just pure sugar, but like unwrapped and just handed to you by a stranger. <laughs> Here you go, clammy hand <laughs> you stranger. Just, and then you would just eat it. Like, <laughs> it was a different time. The best thing for time. me was a Reese's peanut butter cup. And here's the thing, Kate. Mm. There, there was no, when I was a kid, they didn't have many cups. You just, you had a whole cup, which was huge. By the end of the night, you had the equivalent of 20 packages uh, because two come in a package of Reese's peanut butter cup. Now they've got the pumpkin ones and they got the ones with the green uh, Halloween themed bottoms. They got the white cups, the inside out cups. Great. They're all in the same family for me. You can't beat it. You can't beat it. So the question is, what is your favorite candy to get on Halloween? Correct. He yes. didn't phrase it properly. You okay, have you just phrased it. it properly. All right. What is? <laughs> what was the? What would? What would be the alternative version? The, your favorite candy to give? No, no, no. You, no, you, the, you said Halloween candy, as if it's candy that has to be Halloween. I see. Like, I, see. I, I, I like enjoy chocolate about ghosts or something. Right. Okay. Ghosts. Candy uh, corn. Candy corns, which I which I love. I've talked about this before. I love two and a half candy corns with all of my heart. And then after that point, I'm just like, oh God, I'm gonna vomit. That's the exact <laughs> number. It's the same thing with IPAs. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> two and it's, two and a half. And then they're disgusting. And then you're like, oh, <laughs> well, oh. it's funny you should say that. I had a handful today mm -hmm. and I was like, damn, those were good. And I went back in for a second handful. And that was enough. I didn't even, <laughs> I felt a little sick after that second handful. Uh, I, I like got, to, here's something you can do at home. It's a little fun. I like to bite off each color one at a time. Me too. That's what I've always done. <laughs> I don't know Try another way to eat a candy corn <laughs> except for six at a time. I like biting the orange and white off or the mm -hmm. orange and yellow off and you're left with just white and it kind of looks like a bunch of little teeth. Oh, that's fun. <laughs> that's kind of twisted. Yeah. <laughs> Children's teeth. teeth. <laughs> uh, all right, I, I picked, uh, Matthew, I, I imagine you've got something pretty front door. Did they just hand out like spaghetti covered in sauce in your neighborhood? Like a, <laughs> no, 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 no. Spaghettios. 
<laughs> spaghetti. No, they just handed out whole strudels. <laughs> oh, <shit. laughs> oh wow! <laughs> why? Here you go. Powdered no. sugar everywhere. Um, my favorite candy to get on Halloween, and I don't know why I have such an at- Halloween attachment to this, but I do. Is Reese's Pieces? Oh, mm. Mm. in a bag or loose? Um, preferably <laughs> loose. That way, I know they've been um, laced with love. <laughs> Good. Okay. Reese's Pieces. Do you see these days? Did, I don't think they had them back in the day, but these days they make the Reese's Pieces. That's not how you say it. <laughs> that's, that's how we the ignorant pronounce it. Yeah, we, Reese's Pieces. <laughs> yes, I mean that's how I say it. That's how people say it. I know what it is. I don't know what it is. All right, you know, in the in the carrot bag, you know, it's like a bag oh, and it's shaped yeah, like a carrot fun. and oh, tied Easter, at the top. Yeah, yeah Easter, so, Reese's Oh, that's Reese's. Easter. Okay, that makes yeah. sense. That makes yes, more I, sense. They, that that predated or that post dates my childhood. Yeah. yeah, trick or treating. By the way, trick or treating around Easter is just begging. <laughs> 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 they call that begging <laughs> um skid did you uh you got a, a go-to or that that's withstood the test of time well i uh as some of you know i was not allowed to eat candy that's uh, right for, for a very long time so <clears throat> i wasn't uh, your mom I told me about you Right, that's right. It's like, oh no, I know it's his birthday, but he's not allowed to have any candy. Uh, but nowadays, I'm. I mean, I also I love like a Reese's cup. That's that's great. But now, if I were to go now, I'd be really hoping for some fentanyl. Mm-hmm. I just I really want to get lucky. I might go out this year and dress up and try to get some. Yeah, <laughs> trick or treat or fentanyl. Mm-hmm. If you have any. <laughs> oh, actually, or the fun side, not not the ones they have now, but the old Butterfingers, because they changed the recipe. It yeah. used to be like a real kind of, I, I can't even describe the crispity center. and then But then they changed the recipe, and now it just it's like wax. Really? It turns I, into like a flavorless wax in your mouth after a while. Were and, you like me that you liked Butterfinger more because Bart Simpson was the spokesman for it? No, no, that was cool, but I I liked them way before Bart Simpson existed. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, Butterfinger, can't go wrong. Uh, Kate, I've given you ample time here now to uh, work through the, the recesses of your brain to choose one candy. Um, please tell us your candy. So listen, my favorite candy is Kit Kat. Oh, but, so great choice. Classic. But for Halloween... So- Healthy. When I was a child, um, <laughs> the goal was to get like regular size bars of anything. Like that's how you felt mm-hmm. like you sure. won. Is if you mm-hmm. found the neighborhood where someone was giving out regular size bars, and the the pinnacle of it was like a regular sized Butterfinger. Everyone loved Butterfingers. Mm-hmm. Um, I thought that's they the were arc funny. of the covenant of the trick or treater. <laughs> yep. <laughs> It's like the, the person that didn't understand how trick or treat works. Just yeah. Kind of Fortune and glory, kid. Well, how much could it Fortune cost? Fortune and glory. Here's $10? a king size Charleston chew. Yeah. <laughs> Fucking huge thing. <laughs> uh, I like that. Uh, we, I, I, I like to make up, I'm doing what my dad did, and uh, he made up bags with several different candies in it. So I do the mm. same thing little Ziploc bags. With the, some Reese's, some Kit Kats, um, and, and they little have toothbrush, a little, little fun toothbrush, little toothbrush, travel uh, size toothbrush. So then. Advil. So then and now you live in sparsely populated areas. Why is that frowned upon in uh, in busier areas? I mean, in busier areas, you just have hundreds and hundreds of kids that come to the door. Like, yeah, no, we've never you'd had be that. out in like fifteen minutes and then be that that house that didn't didn't show up. Well, I mean, I Halloween candy is expensive. I've got yeah. like four bags of it, and it unless costs like get, sixty dollars. Unless yeah. you get the garbage. Do you know the real cheap bags? I can't it's, do that. I can't, I can't do, do it either. I'm like, kids. I'm like, I can't just give these kids just all Tootsie Roll, like different flavored Tootsie Rolls. It's just awful. See, it's awful. That's where the corporations, they know. They know that's where they got you and they raise their prices mm-hmm. and you, they know you're going to buy it. Do a yeah. lot of kids come to you? Any of you? My oh, neighbor yeah. told me we I don't, don't get hot trick-or-treaters, so. Yeah. So Did you my say your neighbor didn't tell you, told you you don't get hot trick or treaters. Is that what you? <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, <laughs> the guy next door. This we don't get any more hot trick or treaters around here. <laughs> you want to see hot the ugliest kids, you trick or treaters? Ugly trick or treaters don't get candy. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> we have standards. <laughs> Wait, can yeah, we, we get back? a good amount? Can we go back a minute? Have we mm-hmm. talked about on any of our shows? I'm trying to rack my brain. We've done so many different episodes about how about 
the crazy thing about Tootsie Rolls? What? I, I think, think we I think did. We have talked something about Tootsie yeah. Rolls. Yeah. I'd like right. to hear what, you, what were you going to say? Well, then if you eat, a, like if you were to go to the store and buy a Tootsie Roll and eat it, or even that bag of Tootsie Rolls multicolored flavors, if you eat the chocolate kind, you are eating a, at least some portion of Tootsie Roll from the 1930s. Because oh, I don't the, think we did talk about that. What does that mean? The hey, recipe that for true? the recipe for Tootsie Rolls every day you 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 add in le- yesterday's remainders into Wait, or a portion of yesterday's it's remainders. Like into sourdough the new, starter. Yes, it's like sourdough. <laughs> like so, you are basically like so. If you eat a Tootsie Roll now, you kind of have a piece of the 30s in there that you're ingesting. Wow. The FDA allows that. Apparently, that's so wow. that's so wild. It's the it's the uh, the military. Candy complex. That could explain why they're so gross. Because <laughs> eating a Tootsie Roll is like eating a tiny Yankee candle that someone had a conversation <laughs> about chocolate around. <laughs> they're disgusting. I hate well, isn't it? Didn't it start during the Depression when chocolate was really expensive? So I think like, so, it's like yeah. Fake it's, cho- yeah like it's, it's a like little yes. bit of cocoa powder. It's, I was yeah. yes-anding Joe. You were making fun of the flavored Tootsie Rolls. But I actually love those because when I was a kid uh, in my hometown uh, of Haverhill, Massachusetts, they still do it now. They have this thing. It's called the Santa Claus Parade. And it happens like the week after Thanksgiving. And at the end, uh, when Santa Claus comes out, they throw fucking candy. Well, everybody's throwing candy, but one of the main candies that was thrown throughout the parade was those flavored Tootsie Rolls. And so my memory of that- Because they cost nothing. Picking them up out of the gutter and eating them. Uh, They were so good. Um, (laughs) World War II surplus Tootsie Roll. I mean, (laughs) seriously, that's what it did. Like, that's where I ate the bulk- (laughs) Of Tootsie Rolls in my life. I love Tootsie Rolls. And I ate the bulk of them at my grandmother's house. You know what I mean? It's like, <laughs> and she didn't have a dime. So like, this, it was just always Tootsie Rolls were the, the candy of choice. And so when Halloween rolled around, uh, I mean, I got pushed to the end here and both Skid and then in succession, Kate took my exact answers. Everything oh. I was going to say. I didn't was, know I didn't pick fentanyl? No, 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 not fentanyl. Not fentanyl. fentanyl. No, I was going to say. I was going to say. We were both into fentanyl. We could have been having so many fun discussions. We could have been talking about this for. (laughs) We'll talk about it on Legacy. Uh, I, when you said, when you shake it out of the bag and it hits the floor, what gets you most excited? For me, it was the full size Butterfinger because there was one rich lady on my block. And all she did was full size candy bars, and it was the greatest thing in the world. <laughs> and uh, but that's a very rare thing to see today. And incidentally, today Butterfingers stink. So that's what I was going to say. And uh, and yeah, you guys like mentioned right? all that. Like I used to love Butterfingers. Now I could care less. These days, totally I mean, Reese's different. are amazing. Kit Kat's amazing. I'm a big fan of Milky Way and Snickers too. I love Milky Way. Milky Way is a surpri- is like a, you, a very front door, but. Just solid candy bar. Underrated. What about Underrated. Three Musketeers? Three it's Musketeers is the worst. I, I love like Three Musketeers. I like Three Musketeers. That's a yoman like candy. Nothing <laughs> wrong Musket- with Three, yeah. three Musketeers. There's a, it's a journeyman bar. There's I'll a journeyman. Lot of, <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll take Three Musketeers over Snickers uh, seven days a week, twice on Sunday. That's an incorrect opinion. I'll tell you what's wrong with Three Musketeers. <laughs> what, the what's the wrong excessive with amount of nougat. <laughs> <laughs> what's wrong with Three Musketeers is Milky Way and Snickers. Because if you start with the Milky Way and then you're like, wait, this is great. And then you have a Snickers, you're like, oh, this is great too. And then you get to a Three Musketeers, you're like, oh, this is just the nougat. Oh. I would give like, away the other two just to have more three musketeers. That's so funny. I was like, <laughs> I wish that I too. had you was, around to give my three musketeers or trade my three had, musketeers. We made a good deal. Yeah. Uh, the great Kevun says almond joys are pretty good too. So I guess the great Kevun is 70 years old. <laughs> <laughs> Rather like coconut under your don't. I, I love it. Uh, so yeah, I get that. And sometimes right. you feel like a nut. And sometimes, likewise, sometimes you don't. Uh, well, hey, if you're out there this weekend, tricking and treating, hope you have fun and, and, and be safe. <laughs> safe. <laughs> don't go to Kate's neighborhood. To don't go to Kate's neighborhood unless you're, unless you're hot. hot. Unless you're hot, and you might get unless some candy. And, uh, I'm excited. And clean up. I'm excited for Halloween. There's, uh when you have kids, it's like Halloween's a whole weekend long um, event. There's like a thing at the mall tomorrow night. They call it Boo and Brew, where they just have a brewery, just handing out beers, and the kids go to all the stores of the mall and get candy. That's it's, a great idea. It's a yeah. good time. Um, and then there's farms and shit. And then Monday, Monday, what a great day for trick or treat. Give me a Monday trick or treat over a Friday or Saturday. Just, it kind of keeps the week go, the weekend going if you have a Monday trick or treat. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, it's just the best when like the Saturday night 
like is like the Halloween parties. I mean, this is, you know, before I had kids, but it would be like, you could have those parties Saturday night and then still have Halloween. You got yeah. both of them. It's a nice, nice combo. Uh, question from chat. I do. I'm curious uh, to everybody's opinion. One of the majors that we didn't mention is Twix. Your thoughts on mm. Twix. Oh. I mentioned Twix Tiny Twix. Twix. Mentioned Twix. Oh, you yeah. did mention. T- I th- oh, I thought you just said Kit Kat. Okay. Love Twix. Love Twix. Yeah, I love Twix too. I just think it's below most of those, except Butterfinger, which is obviously trash. Butterfinger. I feel, I feel like Twix, like the I trick or treated before Tiny Twix was a thing. I feel, I feel like so there just weren't a lot of them. They were a rare Halloween candy. For yeah, me. yeah. I didn't see a lot of Twix, but I did like them a lot. Oh yeah, we get full size Twix. We all agree that Whoppers are disgusting, right? Nobody oh, loves Whoppers. Whoppers can go to hell. Whoppers. I eat Whoppers. When there's just nothing, no other candy. Left. I'm like, all right, I'll eat it. Like, I won't not eat it. It's like drinking a bush light at the end of the party. You're like, ah, I want a beer. Yeah. It, it, yeah. To me, it's always been like, it tastes to me like what mothballs smell like. Like, I don't know. It's just an odd sort of. That's the recipe, I think. Chocolate covered mothballs. Chocolate covered mothballs. <laughs> In my head, Rolos are and Whoppers are the same, but no, Rolos are amazing. Yeah. Rolos oh, are good. yeah. Rolos, Rolos are great. Phenomenal. Phenomenal. All God. right. Well, I'm glad we, we didn't have too many disagreements here, um, which is good. Um, I guess now we'll play some, some Pathfinder. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, I thought you were going to end that segment with saying, well, I've sent some Halloween candy to each of your houses just for the, <laughs> this for the occasion tonight. Well, that would uh, be nice. The worst was like two years ago, I bought so much of it. And then it was like that f- first COVID year where like, and only like four people showed up to the house. So then my wife and I just proceeded to eat candy uh, until the new year. Um, <laughs> but uh, last year was good. I assume this year will be good as well because I really don't want any candy left over. Um, but speaking of leftover, we've got a combat leftover from the New York show. This past Saturday night. Hey, who was at that show? Raise your hand in the chat. Um, Kay was there. It's good. I was here. I was there. You were there? And, uh, and Matthew, and, you and were there? You were there? We were Joe, you there. weren't there, but Jon Snow was. The king of the north. Oh, it's crazy. The king of the north. <laughs> um, that was a good time. That was, God, that was Saturday night, and that feels, you know, you get older, and time feels like it's flying by, and then you're like, five days ago feels like five months ago. Um, but that's, that's, that's good. I like that. I like that feeling better than the flying by feeling, but we had a lot of fun Saturday night. Uh, and we've got one more show this year, Philadelphia, December 3rd during PAX Unplugged. We've already sold more tickets than the New York show. That's how hot this show is. It's very close to half sold, which this far out, uh, means this show is going to sell out. So please, if you want to come, I mean, it is our favorite, uh, probably our favorite con next to Gen Con. It's just, it's just uh, a good reason to go to Philly. The only reason, and uh, <laughs> the weather is perfect. You got Christmas in the air. Reading Terminal Market packs unplugged, and we're going to be playing Saturday night uh, at City Winery, brand new venue this year. So uh, please head to glasscannonnetwork.com/tour to buy tickets. And if you missed the State of the Nation last week, Glass Cannon Network in 2023 is going to be the shit. So get excited, and if you want 10% off an annual membership to Patreon, tomorrow is your last day to lock that in. Uh, we've been running that promotion for the past week since the State of the Nation because we feel like if you're on board for all the exciting things that we have coming up, uh, especially on Patreon, you might as well get yourself the Why Discord. not get 10% off? Lock it in! It's like a gym membership. Just lock it in, and then if you don't go... And I've fine. always liked anyone that sold me a gym membership. Right. <laughs> I've always really trusted those people. Yep. Just a couple of sign-up fees <laughs> and uh, be sure to refer your friends. Yeah, but the nice part about this membership as opposed to a gym membership is that you don't have to do anything to hold up your end of the bargain. You just right. got to sit there and hit play sometimes. Yeah, and we want you to partake of the membership as opposed to the, the gym membership people. Yeah, who want which you is never their show, best never result show. is you Joe O'Brien it. <laughs> Which is go a couple times and be like, this still sucks. And then just <laughs> never go again. But then you're locked in for a year. Uh, and at the new $1,000 tier, you can take a sauna with us. Mm-hmm. Whoa. Which is fun. Um, I did so not yeah, know about that. So yeah, there's that. 
And then, uh, yeah, only a few more of these this year too. We're only, we're not going to be going every single week up through the holidays. There's like three or four of these left. So, uh, get excited. I've, uh, I've bantered enough. Let's just jump in. Um, recap wise, just uh, very quickly, cause I want to get back to the action. You've been going through these dream, dreamland excursion rituals to try and traverse the dreamlands to find these gifts that you want to give to somebody named the Mad Poet. Because you know that Count Lowles went to the Mad Poet and the Mad Poet gave him certain information that has sent Lowles on this journey to the south. So you're trying to retrace his steps um, in a way by going to the places that he went to to find uh, these gifts or similar gifts. Uh, to present them to the Mad Poet, because it appears you don't just show up and say, hey, Mad Poet, let's talk. You need to come bearing gifts. Seven gifts. Um, but for the first time, really, things got a little hairy when you were at this necropolis uh, of ghouls where you almost didn't get the gift. For the first time, you are in a position where uh, not only may you not get uh, the uh, your quarry here, this green statue of a water lizard that you now know is a statue of the great old one, Bokrug. Uh, but you may die in the process because your latest um, trip to the Dreamlands has taken you to the city of Sarnath. And there's this huge hedonistic festival taking over the city and they're celebrating, like they do every year, the destruction of the city of Ib, the city of stupid frog people that they <laughs> murdered and wiped out. And every year they're like, ah, fuck those dumb froggies. And uh, this is the thousandth year that they're celebrating. And so everybody's coming to town to drink and have sex with each other. And you show up and you're like, can we just get this, this statue and get out of here? And as this party's going down, these ghosts, these frog ghosts come down the stairs and start laying waste to the people. You fight them off and you find out that the raw waters outside have risen and have started to come over the seawall, threatening the entire city. And with it, more of these ghosts, one of which is holding the idol that you seek. So you go up there after meeting uh, a new friend of yours, a, uh, a witch whose name is Eris. You meet Eris. And thank goodness you did, because your new friend Suki and Xantar, King of the Zoogs, during this hustle and bustle of pandemonium, people running everywhere, were pulled deeper into the party, into the party, nowhere to be seen. So Eris is like, I'm in, let's go. You go upstairs and the waters are indeed coming over. There are bodies floating in like an inch of water and three will-o'-wisps attack and brutalize you. Luckily, you're able to take them out but then you see more of these shades of Ib rise up. And one of them, this sort of priestess or priest in the back is holding this idol and they begin attacking you. And they are laying out some serious damage because if they hit and do damage to you, you gain the doomed condition. And every time you take damage, that doomed condition goes up. Get to four doomed or five doomed if you have the diehard feet and you dead. But that may not even be the way you go. Because at the end, a great being, a kaiju-like creature, rose from the depths of the ocean hundreds of feet away, and you think it is the great old one, Bokrug, himself, come to lay waste to Sarnath. As he's approaching, a tidal wave wipes out uh, the crenellated towers and the wall and blocks any means of escape back into the palace. So you are now standing there against four of these Ib shades. One priest of Bokrug, you imagine. And Bokrug himself! The priest holds this idol aloft, activates it, and does like 10d10 damage. Uh, I think that uh, uh, Aldo critically succeeded, Eris and Ethel regular succeeded, and Atticus crit failed. Atticus's crit failure took him below zero, which brought him right to dying too. Even though Eris succeeded, that half damage was enough to bring Eris to dying one. And you're all stupefied eight, <laughs> just from the mere presence of Bokorug, who is just, when you come face to face with the great old one, you're lucky to live to tell the tale with what's left of your mind. 
last thing I'll say is the good news is if you die in the dreamland, you don't die in real life. You just wake up with a madness. However, what if you do that without getting the idol? Let's go back to the map here. Can I make a request? Hello. <clears throat> when you're picking the madnesses for us after uh -huh. we're all dead, uh -huh. can you pick ones that are good for radio this time? <laughs> How dare you? Which one wasn't good? The melancholy Sir Julie? Yes. <laughs> I thought it was funny. I thought you did a great job. And honestly, I think it informed uh, the character creation of Ethel when Sir Julie died very shortly thereafter. So kudos to you, Matthew, for taking that yeah. taking that suggestion and really running with it. Really good job fishing for a compliment, Matthew. Really impressive. <laughs> I mean, sometimes you just are standing near the water and a fish flops near your feet. And that's what I feel like just happened. Give that guy some whoppers. Um, <laughs> all right, back on the map here. Also, if anyone who was at the New York show or listened to the New York show knows why Eris has an icon with a three on it, let me know. Because <laughs> uh, Eris is dying one, that's the skull and crossbones. You're all stupefied eight. That's what the, the brain with the oh, eight. Uh, this little frog guy is enfeebled one, it's in muscles. Uh, obviously Atticus is dying two. And then uh, Ethel is doomed one, and Aldo is doomed two. But we cannot, for the life of us, remember what that three is on Eris. So if you know, uh, remind us in the chat. And if you say doomed, we think you're wrong. Uh, because Kate listened to the episode today and doesn't remember. Oh, three mirror images, says Constrictor. Uh, ah. Kate, you fool! Uh, Kate! It was a beneficial thing. It was my I first like time mirror imaging, so... Huge. All right, guys, we got it. Constrictor got it. I like to think that it was the angels and the and the, the devils on Eris's shoulders, and right now the, the, the devils were winning eight to three. <laughs> That's fun. That's a high-scoring hockey game. High-scoring hockey game. <laughs> Go devils! All right, uh, the thing standing next to Ethel took two actions to activate that idol, but still has one more action. Uh, and, and was I allowed an attack of opportunity on that activation? Did we, yes. Did we resolve that? You did resolve that, and I think right. you missed you missed a ton for like the past year. For the past year. That's true. Show. It's been a horrible year for Matthew, <laughs> rolling <laughs> wise. A bad run. Ever since yeah. Matthew got off the juice, his numbers have come back to earth. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I I want you all to know. I took I went home after the new after the New York show, and I took every single die. Every I took every single D twenty out of my travel dice bag. And I just retired them into my like <laughs> other dice bag because I was like, I'm not rolling them again for a very, very long time. Wow. Okay. Wow. That's good. Yeah. I like it. Um, this creature now uh, reaches out to touch you. Give me a will save. Okay. That's oh, a excuse great. Me. Fortitude save. Oh, thank God. Ooh. I would say my will save is uh, significantly hampered by the stupefaction. Mm. Uh, fortitude will be 24. It's actually a fail. Did you roll bad? I rolled a 10. Roll right down the middle. You roll bad. Um, all right. It's not going to be too bad. Um, you are going to take four points of damage from a harm spell, a one action harm spell. Its hand just reaches right through you and you feel this cold, chill touch your broken heart from your divorce. Um, just a reminder that uh, Atticus and Eris have moved in the initiative order now um, because of what happened, uh, because they went down. Um, so now it is uh, one of the see here. It is one of the Ib Shade's turn. Um, God, Atticus and Eris are both down, so this one is going to come up and flank Ethel Merman. First action is going to move to Ethel. And then... Um, I believe we established that the eyes that Eris gave me are still on my body. I can't that's be true. They are. And you can't be flanked. Um, but you're welcome to stand behind me. Technically, in the, in the that air. spell lasts a minute. Right, but I think I said on the show, rule of cool. Mm -hmm. um, those things are still on you. So no flank bone on this Johnski. Uh, so it's just going to nice. be a straight up attack uh, as it tries to <clears throat> touch you. Um, that is going to be a 24. That is a miss. Okay. 
Uh, and then I'll try to touch you one more time. Uh, also a miss. And Ooh. then it is uh, Ibshade 4 turn before Aldo goes. And that is the one way Ibshade over here. 4 turn. Ibshade 4 turn. Uh, you guys, only the one next to Aldo has been touched. Um, uh, with also, the priest has been touched as well. Uh, so these guys are in great shape. Uh, this one is going to double move to close on Ethel and uh, try to strike. Uh, Natty 3, miss. All right. All right, so it is Aldo's turn. Aldo, what do you do? Aldo is terrified beyond the capacity for rational thought, but he is still going to attempt to... Uh, well, why don't we throw a couple of bombs? How about that? Hey! <laughs> you don't need to be rational. You could probably take that one out in front of you. It's taking some damage. Yeah, we'll we'll try. <clears throat> so, natural twenty. Yeah. Whoa! Well, right natural okay. twenty. Yay! <laughs> Strong opener. Wow. Okay. All right. So that's going to be a crit. Uh, go ahead and pick a city there, Skid. Uh, how about uh, Albuquerque, New Mexico? My great, dad lives. Great town, from what I hear. Did we? Uh, determine that your things are ranged and not magic? Yes. Uh, yeah, I think they're, yeah. Okay. I think the 2E bombs, unless they are imbued with magic, are not magical. But then even if you use a magical bomb, it still falls under range. Uh, okay. Um. Occasionally, I'll be quirky. <laughs> I'll be quirky. <clears throat> okay. Um, this one is from, uh, okay, <clears throat> from Scott in Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. Hi, Scott. Oh. What's up, Scott? Oh, Ranged Kriat. Um, full lashing. <laughs> double, uh, double damage. You breathe in sharply as you aim at your target. To your surprise, a power within your projectile activates. It now glows with a brilliant light imbuing it with an adhesive property. Your target becomes immobilized as your projectile pins your flow foe to the nearest surface that makes sense. They can end the condition with successful athletics check to free themselves. Blah, blah, blah. It is a ghost. This is annoying. Okay. <laughs> Double damage. Okay. Double damage. Uh, oh, wow. Uh, uh, 30 points of damage. Okay, um, it's it's dead. Okay, okay. beautiful. Yeah, which well, we is don't good. have to worry about the. Yeah. What I was going to do is just Thank reinterpret you, that uh, so that it's yeah. not completely lost, like sort of like a ghost. Like a planar anchor. Thing. I was thinking. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, but it's dead instead, which is even better. First one down, um, and you still got a couple actions left there. Okay, I am gonna throw uh, another bomb at the one that just moved up behind Ethel. Okay. You know what you need? You need a bomb that just explodes healing vapors. There, it just there, does like a channel positive energy. That is an option. I don't it have it yet, but I think that's something I can get. Oh, down that the line. is cool. That, that is, would be awesome. really cool. That is a that's a twenty two to hit. Twenty two to hit. I Gotta believe be that is Gotta a hit. Uh, I started looking at other things. Twenty two is a hit. Um, yeah. Remind me, is this magical? Is this particular bomb magical? Uh, this one is, yeah, it's Alchemist Fire, so I guess no. No, okay. Because it does, they do have some sort of DR against non-magical. Right. Uh, okay, so that's 17 points of damage. Okay, some of that gets through. Okay. And, and is DR in 2E not like it was in 1E and so far well, it's as resistance. like... resistance. It's really, I, I'm calling it DR to sh for shorthand, but it's really like resistance 5 or resistance 10 against non-magical. Resistance 5, everything. Yeah, some things get through, and you've determined that already, that, like, ghost touch, uh, force, and positive gets through. Right. Cool. So, with my final action, with my third action, I'm going to, I think for the first time, use my Pendant of the Occult, uh, which I can use as a, with a verbal action to cast the Cantrip Guidance, and I will do that to Ethel Merman. Nice. Ooh. Grazie. Come on, Ethel. Guy Come on, Ethel. His hand. Okay, uh, and we will finish out the round. 
um, with one more of these ib shades. Uh, it is the one nearest Eris. Uh, that one is going to uh, oh, I'm gonna move Eris. It is going to uh, close on Aldo and uh, do one attack. Aldo is sitting here at doomed two, so really doesn't want to get hit again. Uh, garbage roll. Uh, it might be close. Twenty two. On, on me? Yeah, on Aldo. Oh, uh, uh, no, that's a miss. Miss, okay. Yeah. All right, so uh, that is the end of that round. It now goes to round three. In the distance, you see this. <sighs> this thing just approach you. Have you ever seen these videos on like uh, Instagram or TikTok where it looks like a monster is rising from the deep, like they're using After Effects or like something, and it looks so real. Um, <laughs> that's what I imagine, because there's so much mist in the air, you just see like Godzilla in the distance, <laughs> and uh, it's got to look so cool. I wish that this was a movie. Um, Pacific Rim is a movie where that happens. There you go. I haven't seen that, but is that it always reminds me of whenever I saw it, like Evangelion. Is it supposed to be a take on Evangelion? It is. It's it's, it's not far from that. Okay. Yeah. First it's not like, great, but it, it does some the effect shots and some of the action is very good. Love a good mecha. Um, all right, it is Ethel's turn now. At the beginning of each of your turns, uh, I forgot to have Aldo do it um, on his turn. But at the beginning of each of his each of your turns, you need to roll against the unspeakable presence of Bokrug. Um, and why that's important is uh, should you succeed, which is a very, very small chance that you succeed, you're gonna have a better chance of making this will save to wake up because stupefied eight will also be a minus eight to your will saves. <coughs> so Ethel, go ahead and give me that uh, save. Will save? Mm -hmm. That is a natural 20, I believe we realized. It is a natural 20 is required. Well, my natural two then should be uh, a fail. <laughs> oh no. A little bit off. Oh, that's a crit fail. <laughs> uh, it probably is a crit fail. <laughs> yes, it is. I rolled a seven. Uh, um, brutal. Do okay. I get more stupefied because of that? Uh, you know, you just you stupefied. You're just stupefied. Stupefied eight again. sixteen. You're stupefied <laughs> sixteen. Uh, <laughs> well, <laughs> Ethel is stupefied like like Aldo and like uh, Egon uh, beyond a rational thought. Uh, so he's just, all he think, can think to do is just get the statue. That's all he can think to do. And he doesn't even have the wherewithal to try to grab it. Because, mostly because there doesn't, there doesn't seem to be a mechanic for that. Um, but he, is there a mechanic to just grab something out of somebody's arm? Or is it just disarm? Well, it's funny, because is disarm, can you only grab something if, uh, on a crit success? Yes. Or is that not even an, uh, an ability? No, you can't even grab it. On a crit success, you, you knock, knock it out. Disarm. And it falls, yeah. Uh, so I, I was talking uh, to our buddy Eric about this recently, and he was saying that there's there's a good deal of stuff in 2E that's like crit only. Like you got to crit to pull it off because it's hard hard stuff. Um, right. But you know what you can do is like buff your chance to hit. Like there must yeah, be... Yeah, by succeeding. Uh, Someone could give you what's the thing was the plus twenty in Pathfinder First Edition? It's just escaping me. Uh, true strike. Thank you. Like a true strikey type thing where uh, you need to crit on something. You must have that option, but it requires a little uh, teamwork. Yeah, um, I mean the, old, the, the I'm looking at other I'm looking at other things I can use the athletics uh, skill for, which uh, is my best skill and probably my best shot at doing this and there's really nothing else that seems to remotely apply so I'm going to continue to try to disarm. Um, um, Alright, so what I have here is look under the grapple action in oh. 2E. Um, okay. The requirements for the grapple action is you have at least one free hand or have your target grappled or restrained uh, as long as your target isn't one size larger than you. You attempt to grab a creature or object with your free hand. Oh, attempt, okay. attempt an athletics check against the target's fortitude DC. You can grapple a target you already have grabbed or restrained without having a free hand. So the only thing that it doesn't say in there is if you can grab an ob like it doesn't say if the object is attended or unattended. Um, but to me, if you're using, if you're trying to grab an object and you're rolling an athletics check against the fortitude DC of someone. Isn't that sort of inferring that you're trying to grab their object? From or them. Am I... Yeah, you wouldn't try to. You wouldn't need to roll a grapple check to pick something up off the table. But it kind of well, makes I, sense I that you just... have to grapple them. Like you, like when you're trying to take something from someone, you like 
like immobilize them and then you can take it out of their hand. I think that's what it means. You attempt to grab a creature or object with your free hand. No, I think you, I think I can just use grapple to just try to rip it out of their hand. Uh, yeah, I think in this case you have to. There would have to be a distinction between object and weapon. You know what I mean? Like right, you can't just grab true. a weapon right. out of somebody's like, hand. Do that. <laughs> but yeah. in this case, I think this thing, even though it can be used as a weapon, is is really more of an object. It, you're not gonna doesn't have such a solid grip like a. And disarm disarm doesn't specify either. It just says you attempt you try to knock something. Out of the out of a creature's grasp. Now the difference is I'm going up. I'm going up against fortitude versus reflex. Right, right. The fortitude uh, save of this guy. Um, and I succeeded. DC. I succeeded. I don't remember what I rolled, but I remember being surprised that I succeeded on the disarm with a relatively not terrific roll. Um, so I wonder if I'm better just going disarm. Here's how, I'll, here's how I'll rule it. Um, I've been stalling on purpose to see if the chat would weigh in. I don't even know. Um, if you crit success, you can straight up grab it. A regular success, uh, you kind of have a, you both have a hold of it. And with then, grapple. Yeah, and then different things with failure. All right, uh, so, to me, that seems like what the spirit of this is until I hear something different. All right, great. Then I'll do grapple, at least for my first action. Uh, uh, and I will roll athletics. Here we go. Okay, with, you with might my crit. Pack. With my plus one from guidance, thank you, Skid. Yeah, take it. Um, okay, that is a thirty-one. Ooh, thirty-one is a crit success. Yeah, yes! yes! awesome. That's awesome. Holy shit! Man. You grab the doom idol of Ib from this. Fucking <laughs> oh game. my this god, Ethel Merman, worth every penny. Worth <laughs> every penny. That Hell was just yeah. a. That was just a natural thirteen. Thank you for the guidance, Skid. Um, now here's the pickle you're in. All you need to do now is just wake up. <laughs> Not but here. Oh. You need three actions to wake up. You only have two left. And you're going to have a minus eight to those rolls, which means you have to roll an 18, 19, 20, I believe, if I remember my math correctly. Uh, but you can't even do it this round. You've got to stay alive long enough to uh, awaken. Because if they kill you and you go unconscious, that idol just falls into the water. And then, then we start having fun here. Um, yeah. But that's so... where we're at. That well, was my when first. You action. start having fun, not us. That's true. <laughs> Why don't you just run? Just run. You're f just fly as far as you can right now. Fly as that far is, as you can. That is my plan. However, I only have 28 hit points, so I could get if these guys have an attack of opportunity. They don't. Come they on. don't. I don't know. They don't. <laughs> they don't. <laughs> I, I believe they don't because I believe we. I mean, Aldo has made multiple ranged attacks right next to them, and uh, yeah. I. I believe I casted a spell in melee in the last one. In the last okay. encounter. Well. I mean, um, if you stand there, you're going to die. Oh, 100%. <laughs> There's three of them. And as Carlson points out in chat, Joe has never been wrong. Um, <laughs> this is a good point. Does drawing drawing a potion or drinking a potion provoke if they, if they have an attack of opportunity? Yes, it's an interact action. Interact actions. All right. Yes. Well, then uh, Ethel Merman is stupefied, and he doesn't really have time to think this through. So instead, he's just going to scream at the top of his lungs and <laughs> holding the idol and just start flying away at top speed. Yes! Uh, also away from Boke Rug, let's be clear, because... Yeah, uh, turn your back on the Boke. <laughs> yeah, I turn... I, tur I, I quote-unquote turn my back on the Boke, and I just start <laughs> flying... Uh, just start flying away. Okay, how many, how far can you fly? I can double move, so it's forty feet. Okay. <laughs> uh, great. All right, so like, ah, ah, <laughs> I'll let you figure out where that forty feet is. Hopefully, you have the map for it. If not, let me know. Um, if you want to fly into the negative space there, that's fine. We can. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, just don't fly into a wall. Well, I'm flying. All right, yeah, all right. I'm flying up at an angle, so I'll take I'll take myself back a few uh, back gotcha. a few squares. All right, so you just dart away, and uh, none of them attack you. Like, yeah, ah, ah, come on, Ethel, you gotta go, dude. All right, this is very interesting. Um, all right, so Ibshade Two is dead. So now it comes to Atticus and then Eris. Atticus, you are at dying too after falling uh, from this crit. So, everyone has one hero point right now, um, but you can't use that to stabilize unless you fail this recovery check, 
which for you is going to be a flat check DC 12. What do you want to do? Uh, all right, he'll take the f- f- flat check. Uh, yeah, I mean, he has to wake up. I mean, he has to be conscious in the dream to wake up, right? Yeah. <laughs> You've confused all of us, but yes. This is bullshit. Um, you don't have a kick handy. Yeah, we don't have a kick handy. All right, here we go. Flat check. Natty 16. Oh, okay. Stable at zero. Stable at zero and unconscious. So and you can, unconch. Uh, give yourself the uh, unconscious condition. Um, so you're awake, but you need some healing. No, I'm not, not really awake. awake. You're not awake. You're just not no longer dying. No longer dying. Uh, okay. And I believe uh, in this instance you are now wounded too, right? Yes, I believe so. Okay. Uh, just just take an extra look at that. Um, in the past, we've just been using hero points to stabilize, in which case you don't get the wounded condition. Yep. But I think in this case you do. Uh, and you're wounded too because you went from dying two to stable. Uh, okay. Or do you go from dying two to dying one? I'm gonna look it up in my handy dandy pocket core rule book. Oh, I think if you, uh, yeah, thing. I think if you make the recovery roll, you you stabilize with Wait, the how, wounded. What did you, you, what did you up, roll? If you, you roll up. a crit success, you go up two dying conditions. Yeah. A regular success is just up one dying condition. So what did you roll? Oh, really? Yes. Uh, I rolled a sixteen. You you can't crit a flat check. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Recovery checks. Uh, critical success. Your dying value is reduced by two. I wish you could talk this, back to test? a book. Just be like, book, you can't crit on a, on a recovery <laughs> check, and it could answer you. What's What was your dying value, Joe? You can't It's flat check 10 plus your current dying value. Which is 12. But he's just rolling a d20, so you oh, can't crit that. <laughs> you're right. <laughs> my, we roll a natural 20. Yeah. yeah I, oh, yeah. That's what they're saying in yeah. the chat. But that's... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You have to roll a natural 20. Yeah. Okay. All right, so dying one. You're dying one. Okay. Or just use, I, I or you thought, could have just used your hero point. I thought you just you went You can't up. do it until you, unless you fail the recovery check. Oh, interesting. I, I thought he went up and, and um, got the wounded condition, but... Okay. All good. That's okay. I'm gl- I'd rather take our time with this. This is how we're really going to learn it. Um, so, Eris, same thing for you. The difference is where you're only a dying one if you succeed on this recovery check. You'll be unconscious in zero and wounded one. Also, I think he'll be, yeah, wo- I think Joe will be wounded one as well. Right, if he um, succeeds. Yeah. I used my hero point in Brooklyn. Do that's I still okay. have one? You start a new sesh uh, with a fresh bottle cap. Hmm. Yay, that's amazing. Okay. You, you earned it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, DC 11. Natural 20. Oh, oh nice. Oh. Nice. See, Joe, that's all you had to do. Yeah, it's that's easy. All you had to do. Kate, you made it look so easy. It is easy. <laughs> all right, so Kate, you get to save your uh, bottle cap, and you no longer have the dying condition, but you are wounded one. Wounded one. Can we just take a moment to appreciate, nobody on the podcast can appreciate this with us, but the the, the photo of the goblin alchemist just riddled with arrows. <laughs> just riddled with <laughs> arrows. <laughs> and the, rec- the recovery so session. <laughs> yeah, the art in uh, the 2E core is pretty sweet. Did I say photo? I meant image. Did I say photo. I don't, yeah, I don't think it's a photo. I don't, I don't think it's a photo. For that. They're not real, Matthew. What? <laughs> yeah. What? It is pretty rough. Like if you're like you if you're say? like I'm going to play this game with my kids, the goblin is riddled with arrows, bleeding from all the holes and blood is pouring from its mouth. It's a pretty gruesome <laughs> and photo eyes. as Matthew thinks it is. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, all right, so you guys, that's your situation. You're Do I have to be healed. Zero hit points or one? Zero. You have zero, zero hit okay. points, and you have the wounded one condition. Okay. And the unconscious condition. Um, it's all about conditions. They should just call it Pathfinder Condition instead of mm. 2E. All right? All right. Burn. Solid burn. I told them, <laughs> Skid. Uh, okay. It is the uh, the priest's turn. He's ready to take you to church. All right. He, you flew away 40 feet. 40 feet, yeah. And you took my idol. I don't care for that. Uh, it flies right to you. <laughs> yeah. Hi. But that took two actions. Fuck, I didn't think you'd just 
grab the idol. I thought it would be a little more of a fight. <laughs> this is rude. There's really no other option if you think about it. You can't just kill the guy. I mean, I w my plan was, before we established the grapple thing, I was going to disarm him and then just plunge into the water, chasing after the, like, swimming down after the idol. If I can swim, also I'll sink pretty easily, and then I was just going to try to wake up from underwater. Mm. Yeah, I'm looking, uh, it's not, he's not, like, super athletic to try and take it back from you, so his solution is to try and kill you. Uh, I've got a few casts of harm here, so I'm going to try it again. Go ahead and give me a fortitude save. If you crit fail, it will be double damage. Uh, that is a natural 19. Yes. For a, that could be crit success, pass. Yes. It's a 33. Yes. That is not a crit success, just Damn. a regular success. Ow. However, you will take just half damage, which is just one point of damage. Okay. Oh. Not bad. And that was its whole turn. Okay. Uh, now, Good turn, Ethel. Okay, awesome. now the two shades that followed you. Um, I think they might be a little slower. Let's see here. About the same. All right, so one of them is going to peel off and go towards Aldo, and the other one is going to double move to you. Actually, they both have to double move. Um, so one double moves to you, one double moves to Aldo. Uh, the one near Aldo will take an attack with its racking touch. Natty four, Skid. Oh, oh man. Natty four, okay. you're doing just fine. I have a feeling okay. Matthew is due, though. Um, let's see here. Okay. Oh, it went 20 to not 20. That's going to be a 21 to hit. That's a miss. All yes. right. Man, my rocks have run out. Can yeah. we actually do this? Can okay. we actually? We can't. We can't. We it's can. preposterous. We can't. Maybe we can. Maybe we can. <laughs> Maybe we can. I think we are. <laughs> well, I think we should Working probably. Already. <laughs> I think we should probably wait to resolve it until Kate's cat is out of the picture, so that people can actually pay attention no, to the show. I'm sorry, she was meowing. Oh, oh no! no. I don't put her away. Oh. I'm just kidding. She's very cute. That was the She's whole thing. She's my precious. Oh no, my precious. <laughs> What's her name? Is it my precious? Tweak. Oh. Tweak. Tweak. Of course it is. <laughs> Amazing. Do you give it coffee every morning? <laughs> yes, that's why. <laughs> Wake up, Tweak. Um, fresh pot of Joe. It is uh, Aldo's turn. I should I try to wake up now? I mean, yeah, you get out of there. Yeah, I'm gonna. Okay, I'm gonna okay. spend three actions and an attempt to wake up. All right, first give me the. Uh, I keep forgetting this. Give me the save against the unspeakable presence, which God damn it, it has to roll a natural twenty. No, it's good. It's good. It gives him a chance to be on Uh Fail. Okay. So, Stupefied 8, uh, for you, you need to roll, well, roll roll your will save to wake up. It's going to be very, very hard. Okay, yeah, this is going to be hard. Yeah, it's going to be really hard. Natural 17, 18, 19, 20 are the only... Wait, natural 17 is a 23 for you? Yeah. Did I miss add? I have a plus 5 with my 8 Stupefied. That's 22. Uh, right? Oh, no, you're right. You're right. I'm sorry. Yeah, the only reason I thought that is I remember looking this up, and I feel like you, Joe, and Matthew wake up on 18, 19, 20, and Kate on just 19, 20. Oh, well, that's, I'm never going to do I'm going to die. Like, yeah, all right. I, it's, I, it's, I drink my own alchemist fire. And fire. <laughs> <laughs> we are all going to die. No one's getting this idol. Yeah, and by right. the way, we're never coming back for it. And by the way, we're never going to find the mad poet. So the AP's over. <laughs> oh, great. <laughs> I will Tonight's say. Tonight's the night. Tonight's in, the night. Hey, congrats, everybody, for seeing the last episode yeah. of Strange Aeons. <laughs> Thanks for sticking through to the end of the show, guys. <laughs> in, <laughs> what, a, what a ride it's been. What a in ride Ron it's Lundin's been. conversion, I said this in the after, uh, uh, the after talk, talk back after the show, in Ron Lundin's original conversion, it was completely impossible. Now it's just near impossible, but there is a chance. Um, at the end of the day, if you all die, but you get that, if Matthew's able to wait, you know, there's a lot of different permutations of how this could work, but like, odds are you're all gonna die, but all it takes is one. So let's see. Throw me the idol. <laughs> Throw me the idol. Uh, all right, Throw it me is the idol. The, uh, the Ipshade right next to you, Skid. This may, uh, this may save you a lot of time here if this thing just kills you. It is its turn. 
Um, let me see my attacks here. I think he just has that racking touch. Yeah, all right, so here we go. Uh, 19 to hit. Uh, that is a miss. Okay, second attack, uh, cracked eye, uh, 22 to hit. A uh, miss. Okay, and uh, I don't want to take that third attack, so you're going to be all right again there, buddy. Uh, it is going to peel off and uh, try to go uh, after Ethel Merman. And now it is round four in the distance. The mighty Boak Rug continues <laughs> its approach. It was hundreds of feet away, and now it's less and less and less, and you can see it. Uh, start to come through, and like I said, it has like a beard of tentacles. Kind of looks like a giant iguana with this beard of tentacles, and it's just Ugh. swimming and splashing, and tidal waves are coming over, knocking over parts of the wall. People in the city, if you look down over the seawall into the city, you just see, you are like, oh my god! It's flooding, <laughs> uh, bodies everywhere, uh, but you are at the highest point of the city, atop the seawall. Um, it is now Ethel's turn. Ethel, give me your save against unspeakable presence. Oh, yes. If only you had some healing power to wake up your friends. I swear to God, natural 19. So oh. nothing, oh. nothing happens. <laughs> Brutal. Wait, yeah. so it's, yeah, it's a will save, right? So yes, enough. It's, yeah. it's, okay, it's um, Ethel is going to triple move. He's going to fly three times and just get put 60 feet between him and these, uh, and the, and these, he's, these, Frog-like pursuers. Frog people. Okay, which way are you going? Uh, east? Straight up. Really straight. challenge, Troy. St straight let's up. Get, let's explore the three-dimensional space. <laughs> okay. Well, what's in front of me? Is there? A, is it a wall? Is it a wall that I can get over? Or what's? Or we're at the is kind it of like top the big of the wall, palace right? thing that we were in. Um. Yeah, it's a big palace there. So there's the seawall, um, which is like which ends. So you could just fly up atop the palace for sure. Yep. Straight up. Then. Sixty straight feet. Up. Straight up. Okay. Uh, I like it. I like it a lot. And uh, just remember, if you choose to hover at all, that's an action to hover. Yep. Uh, but you're you're actually moving. I can imagine you're moving circuitously. Uh, and um, I would like to, it stated for the record that I that Ethel continues to scream in a stupefied fashion the entire time. <laughs> right, thank you. Uh, Atticus, back to you, buddy. You are uh, still a dying one, so I'll need another recovery check here. Uh, should you fail, you'll go to dying two unless you want to use your hero point after that. This is all moot and doesn't make any sense. No matter what happens, we die. Not necessarily. Without a cleric, no matter what happens. Well, with we that die. attitude, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> well, no, I guess we- It's a wasted die rolls and it's going if to be you're, wasted If you're hero unconscious, point. there's no way for us to even get them up. To wake right? up. Right. So they right. have to die, right? Yes. Yeah, unless someone can heal you, but... Uh, but not with this thing coming at us <laughs> as well. I mean, I could maybe... Well, I could yeah. do it. I have some potions, like I could... You would have to, throat, like, but. administer all right. while these things are harassing you, but they miss a lot. Yeah. So maybe there's potential. I don't know. Uh, all right, flat check incoming. DC 11. Fail. <laughs> okay. Good. Obviously. <laughs> Why? <laughs> do, do you want to go to dying too, or do you want to spend your John? Do I want to go? Oh, uh, no, I'm not going to spend my John. There's no point. There's no living. There's no. <laughs> th nothing means anything. Wait, there's my nothing God, more Joe than this moment. <laughs> he's going to no engage in the bummer, and he's going to refuse to use his consumables. <laughs> Uh, all right, so you go to dying too, and uh, poor Eris, you're still unconscious. If anyone could give you any healing, you'd be back in the fight for how long? I don't know. You just draw the ire of these frog people. Uh, Ethel is no longer in the fight, so let's see. Um, <laughs> Ethel is the fight. Ethel is the fight. Yeah. Ethel, you flew away. You said 60 feet? Yeah. That's... that's real shitty. Um, yeah, by the way, I mean, if, if Ethel somehow gets away... You know, that's it. It's all fine. Yeah, we can all yeah. die. We'll deal with it. But we'll like, take our, our if Ethel doesn't issues. get away, then it's all pointless. 
Sure. Um, well, this is very interesting. 60 feet away, last time you used an action and could only fly 40 feet, so they could catch up to you with a double move. Now they can't. Um, so the fish people, the regular fish people, don't have any range things. So they just like triple move and they get like right next to you. Uh, but that doesn't really, they, they don't have any actions left. Now the priest can double move, but like the, the I, have, I, have a, I have a harm spell left, but when I use the one action harm, it has to be range of touch. So you've created a situation for yourself where there might be a way you can uh, get out of this. Um, hmm. Let's see if I have a ranged spell where I only have to move once. I don't know if I do. Because you said you're 60 feet away, so if I move 25, I'll be 35 feet away, and the range on that spell is 30 that I was just going to use. Gross! So this is what happens, Joe, when you just th think positive. <laughs> hey, I'm, you know? I'm, I'm just talking about you and I. I'm like, there, we're, why me. are we even rolling dice? There's no point. I didn't roll any dice. My turn just happened, and you rolled now natural it's twenty. When? Oh, but didn't I also just? I'm just unconscious now. Yeah, yeah. I guess that's the thing. Is like, even though you 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 critically succeeded, like, unless Aldo wakes you up, ultimately, they're just gonna slowly come over to you and just be like, wait a minute. Is she, is she breathing? Head smash! <laughs> yeah. And then you'll wake up in the real world. Um, all right, well, it is going to, uh, instead of... Mm, no, I, you know what? I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to stay on you. I want my idol back, uh, but it's going to cost me three flight actions to do it. Um, now, I don't know that you're going to try to use three actions at some point to awaken, uh, but I am going to continue to chase you. So they just all swoop towards you, um, hoping that they can catch up with you. And then it comes to Aldo. Aldo, go ahead and give me a will save. Yay. Uh, 21. No, um, that's okay. You're stupefied eight. Uh, do you want to try and awaken again here or did you have some other plan? Yeah, I'll try to wake up again. Okay. Okay, so Aldo, just trying to, oh, wake up, wake like, up, wake on. up. You're not in Kansas anymore. And uh, uh, let's see, the uh, the shade next to you attacks. In fact, that was one of the ones that uh, just went out of order here. All right, so it is going to uh, attempt to attack you. Uh, uh, that is going to be a 33. Wait, no, I, that was the priest's number. Uh, sorry. Still that is going hit. to be a 26 to hit. Uh, that's, that's a hit. Okay, so you will take 10 points of negative energy damage, and you yeah. go to doomed three. Ugh, okay. So one more doomed, and you just wake up. <laughs> yeah. It is its turn again, and it will uh, it'll try and send you there. Send you to hell. Okay. Uh, it misses. Um, and uh, then I am going to have him leave you alone and go join the friends. Okay. The priest is calling, come! Uh, it just flies in pursuit of oh. Ethel and the idol. Now you could wake us up. I also have, I'm, I'm reading the rules here, sir, and it says How that How if, dare you. if I'm unconscious at zero hit points, but not dying, which I am not anymore. Correct then I naturally return to one hit point and awaken after sufficient time passes. Oh no, here it is. The GM determines how yeah. long you remain unconscious. I read unconscious that and I was like, From a dead. minimum of 10 minutes to several hours. Yeah, it's like an out of combat thing. Yeah. Just never mind. I read that earlier today too. And, uh, I only read the bold text. I didn't read the not bold text. You totally Matthewed that text. <laughs> it was classic Matthew. Feels Matthewed. bad. That's what we call a Matthew around the office. Um, okay. All right, it is uh, it is round five, and uh, wait, did Kate get to go? She is unconscious. There's nothing for her to do. Mm -hmm. well. According to the rules, 
Just according to the rules. Just yeah. according to the <laughs> rules. And uh, something really fun happens at the top of round five. Uh, Bokrug becomes close enough to you that you can see him. And there he is. Oh, <laughs> oh no. no. My God. There oh, no. no. That's Baby. really not good at all. Oh, no thanks. Uh, yeah. It has been moving slowly toward you, and now it is within 50 feet of you. Why is that important? Next round, it will be on you. Oh, for God, so he can't oh. wake us. <laughs> it's not within 50 feet of me. It is not, it is not. Um, it's getting close. Uh, and it is Ethel's turn. Ethel, go ahead and give me your roll against unspeakable presence. The unspeakable presence of this great old one. Wait, nope. it, d d does it not have a range? Yeah, 300 feet. <laughs> it's listed so as, as 300 When I get 300 feet away from, from Boak Rug, I, my, I won't be stupefied anymore? Uh, you won't have to roll against unspeakable presences. It's a freebie just for you. Um, okay, I, it's my turn. I just it's keep your turn. I keep you moving to You want to try and awaken? No, 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 no. Not yet. What are you thinking? I'll fail and they'll kill me. I'm gonna okay. keep flying sixty yeah, keep feet. Flying away. Keep Just going. keep flying away. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, great. <laughs> <laughs> so keep track of how far away you are at this point. 120 feet from the base of the wall, essentially. Uh, the, the, the top of the wall. Yeah, I, I got to where I am now, and then I started flying straight up, or like at a yeah. slight angle up. So we could um, we could call it even as 120. 120 from yeah. the because you were already a little bit above when you went out to the priest. So, call it 120 as the crow flies. I'm not gonna hold hold you over the coals for it. All right, so that's Ethel's turn. Uh, Atticus, go ahead and give me a, a DC 12 recovery check. <laughs> Shut up, Matthew. <laughs> <laughs> Natural 17. Oh, oh man. <laughs> Doesn't mean anything. <laughs> All right, guess who went to this die is even one? worse. This is even worse. Like you slowly approaching consciousness <laughs> as a great old one is slowly coming toward you. This would be the worst stream you could possibly have. Yeah, there's no worse stream. No oh, wonder hey. you'd be messed up when you woke you up. You know what? I think this is a good time for me to talk about a nightmare, a recurring nightmare. Oh. I don't know if anybody ever had recurring nightmares when they were kids. Oh my god. But I had a very clear still recurring have. nightmare for a couple of years. It was really, really brutal. And I it was in my old house, in my basement, in the dark, and I was curled up on the floor in the basement, fetal position, like asleep basically. Eyes closed. I couldn't tell if my eyes were open or closed basically because it was so dark. And there was just this massive footsteps moving on the upstairs <laughs> to the door opening the door coming down the stairs oh, and coming oh to me God. and it scared the shit I just got chills now wow. thinking about it That's and it used horrific. to scare the shit out of me and I would wake up in bed terrified uh, and I never saw what it was there was never any indication it was just coming for me and I was wow. in the basement it was so scary wow that's what yes. I imagine when I imagine this death comes for us all Joe one day or another it's true Maybe that's what it is, Matthew. It's death. For I beheld a pale horseman, and the rider, his name was. What is it? I don't know the quote. His rider, his name was Death. That, that beheld, and lo, his name was Death. <laughs> okay. <laughs> is that Dikembe Mdembo saying not today? That's what we say to Death. We said, no, 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 not today. <laughs> not in my house. <laughs> not in my house. Oh. Eris, um, you. Uh, you are still unconscious, unfortunately. Uh, the priest continues flying uh, to try and stay as close to Ethel as possible. The shades follow it, and it is Aldo's turn. Uh, uh, Troy, I'm not sure if you wanted to. Uh, if you wanted to improv, spice things up a little. <laughs> Get a, get a chance you want to go to Game Mastery Guide, page 156, and run some chase mechanics? <laughs> <laughs> Anybody want to run a chase? Just run a quick chase, get out a deck of cards and run a chase? Just run a, run a quick chase? Uh, we've got building a chase, we could start building it now. <laughs> and then later on is running a chase. <laughs> uh, but no, honestly, I went right to it because this is exactly what this is for, because there is 
unless he has a ranged spell he's going to do, there's no, it'll never catch him. And we might as well just fast forward to 500 feet away, right? Like, it's it's interesting. But with Book Rug coming, there's obviously round by round, like, consequences, but. Yeah. Yep. But that's what chases are for, because if you keep moving, <laughs> three action move, three action move, they'll never catch you. Sure. Um, okay. Uh, Aldo, what do you do? All right, so Aldo is still, I assume, terrified. Yeah. He's still, well, I should save that role. Uh, he's terrified <laughs> beyond the capacity for rational thought. He's shaking, his big knobby knees are knocking together. And he's just like, he's digging his fingernails into his palms. He's just like, there's no place like home. There's no place like home. Trying to wake up. Natty 19. That is a 24. 24, and you wake up. Yeah, uh, I didn't have you roll against the unspeakable presence, but assuming you failed that, then I, the no, 20, I, I did fail that. You did fail yeah. that. Then yeah, 24. Yeah. Aldo wakes up. Oh, Aldo! Good Come job. On. Good job, buddy. Woo. So no, uh, no madness for Aldo. However, it looks like Atticus and Eris will need a miracle. don't need to roll for the rest of the episode. <laughs> uh, <laughs> All right, so that was that. So the uh, the remaining Ib shades just keep closing on Ethel at that ah. moment. At <laughs> that moment. Bokrug moves up to the wall. <laughs> First action. Second action, <laughs> Bokrug <laughs> slams. <laughs> I mean, you have to really... Are you having a good time over there? <laughs> you have to really picture this. Like, Bokrak just... Oh, lifts up his fist and just... Boom! Lays it down on Atticus. Vaporizes rolls, Atticus. And rolls a 64. <laughs> Why are you even rolling? Oh my god. You get all natural one. He has been he's because he's been looking forward to this for weeks, Kate. Ugh. For weeks. Now I understand why this was your favorite encounter. You yeah, got to yeah. roll for a great old one. I mean it's pretty fun. It's not every day you get to play a, a great old one. Uh alright, so uh yeah, I mean obviously it's a crit which would take you straight to dying three now, uh, because of your uh your situation, uh, it then uh, slams another fist on you uh, and crits again oh. and kills you. Just boom! Oh. boom. <laughs> it just immediately kills you and takes out most of the wall as it does so. Bokrug has entered the building. <laughs> uh, Ethel, give me a roll against unspeakable presence. Fail. Fail. What do you do? Fly 60 feet, 180 feet away from Bokrug. Keep flying away from Bokrug. 180 feet away, you'll live forever. Um, I've only got five minutes and the spell's up. <laughs> Atticus is gone, Eris is gone, Bokrug and the Shades continue uh, to follow you. Aldo is gone, it goes to round seven. Goodbye, Eris, because Bokrug just starts pounding uh, on top of Eris's poor unconscious body. Uh, 63 to hit. Hold on, by. let me just make sure that hits. <laughs> um, Check your AC. Make sure yeah, you have all your boxes. Yeah, my AC's 17 checked. right now, because I don't know why. Um, that hits. Unconscious can oh, it's a crit. A very, but yes, and so yeah. is, I'm oh, assuming. Oh. I rolled poorly on the second attack, but was a 55 a crit as well? <laughs> um, are, you, are you taking yeah, that, yeah. MA, that multiple attack penalty into, I had, into account? I did, I did take the multiple attack yeah, penalty. Yeah, you know, the great old ones, like the build, it just really suffers from the multiple attack penalty. <laughs> I, I gotta so say. That's what they always say. You I've got a couple of never play a great old one. I want to take to uh, to help him. You know what, Joe? I'm sorry that I gave you shit. I just want to die. Exactly. Um. <laughs> Let's just cut to the story here instead of a non-story. Eris is out of commission. Yeah. Uh, and Bogra <laughs> begins to like slowly lift out of the water, like uh -huh. towards the top of the wall. It's like clamoring on top of it. Uh, Can we, we have just, a scene where it's just slaying uh, all of the attendees of the Bacchanal, just like one fell swoop, just <laughs> just flesh and bone. This is a race to see if you can pull this off, uh, Matthew. It is uh, your turn. Uh, you're 180 feet away. Um, 
roll uh, against unspeakable presence. Natural one. Natural uh, one. Still stupefied. Now you're stupefied. Sixty. All right. So and so now we get to two forty. Two forty. So next round I'll be at three hundred, and then the round after that I'll have I'll will no longer be stupefied, and then I will try to wake up. Unfortunately, when it comes to Bokrug's turn, Bokrug is going to cast a spell on you, and you are within range. <laughs> Please give me a just a basic fortitude save. Oh jeez. Oh, no. <laughs> Check the DC. <laughs> God. Twenty uh, twenty-three. Critical fail. Yeah, I figured. <laughs> <laughs> All right, it's not so bad. Um, you take a um, hundred and six points of <laughs> from horrid wilting. <laughs> so your skin starts to be racked, and you are now a dying two, and you just fall, and he just fucking kills you, and boom. <laughs> You awaken. Do I have the last one? thing you remember seeing is the great old one Bokrug laying waste to the city of Sarnath. Do I wake up with the idol? He asks. Question mark, question you mark. You wake question? up <gasps> like you would out of an actual nightmare. I mean it's gotta be terrifying. It has to feel so real, even though you know that you're choosing to take these dream excursion rituals, and you wake up and you your hands still feel heavy from having it, but there's nothing there. All right, but I wouldn't have it in the wouldn't have it in the waking lands anyway. Right, but it, that that awaken action is one of those things you feel like it it stays in your possession. When you use the awaken action, anything you find in the dreamlands stays in your possession. Let's start with a little bit of bad news, and then get to some more bad news. Straight from Ron Dean's mouth. Not everything Ron, carries... Who's Ron Dean? Ron Lundeen, the uh, writer of book three of Strange Aeons, the one who converted this. You, you said Ron course. Dean. Did I? I was yeah, thinking. is it like a, one of the Ronettes? Ron Dean is his assistant. He, uh, <laughs> he proofreads all his work, which is weird. He picked an assistant with basically the same name. Um, he said, not everything carries over between the... Uh, the dreamlands and the waking world. Um, if you find items like we talked about, they don't carry uh, into the waking world. Madnesses, like they affect you in the waking world, they don't affect you in the dreamlands. But one condition, if you get it in the dreamlands, stays with you. And that condition is doomed. Oh, God. Oh, shit. So even in the waking world now, uh, Aldo is doomed three and Ethel is doomed one. Now, the good news about Doomed is a full night's rest can remove it. Restoration, if you had, uh, if Ave Maria was still here, uh, could help you. Um, but you basically, until that's removed, you want to make sure you don't get in any tussles. Or if you do, you stay back. Because at Doomed 3, all uh, Aldo would have to do now is go to die, Dying 1, and you'd be permanently dead. This condition is so great, this curse from the dreamlands has followed uh, followed you into the waking world. It's not that great. It's not that great. <laughs> I'm here to tell you. But of course, you also died in the dreamlands, which means you awake with a madness. But let's talk about this scene here. You wake up, Ethel, your camera's on you. We saw everybody else die. Oh, well, not uh, Aldo. You wake up and you see Aldo sitting uh, across from you, already awake. Aldo, what do you say? Uh, well, that was that was a terrible dream. Did you uh, did you die or did you wake up? Naturally, I assume you died. And he's looking at everybody, trying to ascertain if they have any obvious mental issues, apart from the ones that I always know that they have. <laughs> well, uh, I seem to have died. Uh... I have to say, I don't think that was specified in our initial agreement. And dying is actually extra. Uh, well, no, you're not dead, are you? You're still alive. Very much alive. I mean, I'm, we're having this conversation on a boat. Is Eris you know. with you? Oh, yeah, that's a good question. Oh, yeah, good question. She wake up with you? Start to take in the room. The room. 
you see a couple things. You see um, Atticus, but Atticus is just like staring off into space, like not quite there. You see Suki and Xantar are still asleep and like twitching. And then you look around the room and over towards the brig where Halster was, the brig and Halster are gone. And what has been replaced in that space is like a, it just doesn't make sense. Like it's almost like a small um, barren piece of land with like half of a tree stump. Hmm. <laughs> and, and the boat? Inside of the boat and laying next to that tree stump is Eris, who also wakes up. Uh, <laughs> she didn't know that you could just die and get out of the dream world. She's been trying to get out so she doesn't know what's going on. She probably, can she see them? Yeah. Um, what's ha where's the thing, what, 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 what happened? Um, am I still in the dream world? Did I, did we die? I believe so. There's a tree in the boat, which is strange, so and you're here, which you shouldn't be, as far as I know. This is Are very, you? very, very strange. Are you telling me all I had to do was die to get out of the dream world? Theoretically, yes. How are you feeling? Angry. Understandable. And she's like touching her cloak. Does she have her parts? You feel like you have your parts. Uh, okay. However, Sorry. Any body parts you collected during your time in the dreamland are gone. Any items you collected whilst in the dreamland are gone. Everything you have on your person is what you came into the dreamlands with. I'm also imagining, because her familiar did not die, um, she probably doesn't have that. After a couple minutes pass, you notice that your little poppet is lying on the stump. Next oh, to <laughs> my oh. egg. And she uh, <laughs> goes and gets it. Okay. Let's talk about Atticus. Atticus, well, I'll just come back to you. <laughs> your, <laughs> your, your situation is sad. I'll talk to you, to you, Ethel. Ethel, you died in the dreamlands. Indeed I did. Came so close to coming out with the idol. Heroically flew towards this priest of Bokrug and grabbed the idol. Flew around like an idiot. And never got out. You seem to be just fine. I don't trust this. <laughs> Eris, you awaken and obviously you're on a boat with that has like this splice between worlds. You see a part of your old homeland has now found its way into the boat. You wake up here and you feel fine as well until you start to hear the sound of rushing water. And for some reason that makes you very, very nervous. And how this mechanically manifests is that you are paranoid and your paranoia is tied to water. Whenever you are around water, as long as you can hear, see, or smell water, you are permanently frightened one. Oh, wow. So you just feel paranoid uh, when you realize you're on a boat and there's something about being next to water that freaks you out. Are you guys, are you sure that we're safe on this boat? Um, <laughs> I just saw like an unspeakable thing. Did you guys see the unspeakable thing? Why are we on this boat? We need to get off the boat. We need to get out of the water. Um, no, it's all right. Calm down, you horrible creature. We're all, we're all right. We're fine. See, there's your tree, your little doll. Everything's, everything's yeah, hunky-dory. Question about the tree. 
Um, we're all seeing that, right? Like that's yes, not just I me. I am also seeing the tree. And you're perfectly sane. I, I believe so. I mean, as much as I was before I fell asleep. But there is definitely a tree. There. I mean, look, I walk over and like knock on it. Yeah, Real it's like tree. the slice in the tree doesn't make any sense. Like it would take a perfectly uh, like Valerian steel to be able to cut through uh, the way that the tree was shaved. Atticus, when you died for the first time in the Dreamlands, you woke up with a delusion. A delusion that we find out later, um, you feel as if your new companion at the time, Ave Maria, wasn't telling the truth. That she was um, out to get you, or like a, 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 just an evil presence to be around, set on your destruction. The sad thing about that is now that she's passed, it's become just kind of a flavor uh, element where as this delusion heals itself over time, you're going to realize you were wrong. And it's just going to, I would assume, uh, if you have any sort of conscience, just make you feel bad and there's nothing you can do about it. And honestly, there's probably nothing you could have done to save her even if you didn't think that. But when you die a second time in the dreamlands, things take on a darker, um, sort of tone get a greater madness huh. and for you that is a cognitive disorder and what that means mechanically is uh anytime you're casting a spell with a verbal component there's a chance you might mess up your words you might forget how to speak the spell as written in your spell book and so you'll need to roll a will save anytime you cast a spell with verbal components. Oh my God. Or you'll lose the spell. <laughs> it may not be a high DC. It adds a little flavor as you're, you can't get the words out. I think Joe's having fun. Are you having fun? It looks like he's having fun for sure. <laughs> the, the layers of which this is a terrible choice is so many. <laughs> The number one of which is, I'm not role playing a stutter. That's you don't have awful, to. It's not a and stutter. And I'm not fucking doing it. It's not it's a, a stutter. Rude. Aphasia, Joe. It's just like uh, you can't you can't think of getting those words out. It's not a stutter. It's just a cognitive disorder. Hmm. He couldn't have a uh, mechanical uh, penalty to his melee attacks, huh? <laughs> <laughs> the one of all of them he had yeah. to get. <laughs> That was, really wouldn't be that much directly fun. to do with speaking spells. <laughs> Man, what a rough. What a rough. It's supposed to be tailored to the piece. Uh, oh, I thought it was uh, random. I thought you were rolling on a table. You can no. choose. Uh, you obviously choose. But his hands are tied. My hands are tied. Yeah. My hands are tied. <laughs> Talk to Ron Dean. Look, Joe. I, I hear there's Send a, a letter book you to can Ron Dean. <laughs> do I hear there's a book you can open to just freeze yourself in amber for a while? That'd be sounds great. Like, I'll just make a backup like, character yeah. who's a fucking cleric. <laughs> <laughs> um, here's the thing. These conditions over time will go away. Um, and there's a lot of time spent on the boat that just passes. They, they lessen. That will save will get easier and easier as you start to regain your faculties. And for every time you go to the dreamlands, that doesn't affect you. It's only when you have to deal with stuff in the real world. Your madnesses don't carry with you into the dreamlands and you still need three more gifts. So you should be fine there. It's just, you've been getting into trouble while on the boat as well. Well, this is the question I had. Tricky. What's the story with the gift? It's lost. Um, you could try to go back there and see what the situation is. Um, you do remember the Yellow King telling you like, you should try to get as many of these as possible. Um, oh, so it's not like seven or nothing or failure. No, no. I no, have no, a no. feeling like we get a certain bonus to a diplomacy role with with seven. You get a Got different it. bonus. All right, with that six, makes a lot more sense because I was like, We're, I'm not going back. What, what are we yeah. going to go back there for? A we great go old one. We gotta go back. We gotta go back. What if we just What if we just straight up to Detroit at the next live show with no warning? We want to go see the Mad Poet right now. Let's Can just, we do that? 
We'll just mm -hmm. take our chances with the. We'll just take our chances with our with our bottle caps and just go straight to the med pit. When Troy, you are your thoughts ready, <laughs> you can go back to the caravanserai and uh, meet with the yellow king. He said, "When you're ready, come back to me, and I will uh, take you to see the mad poet." Is that what you want to do? Is that what you have prepared? <laughs> I'll say I'll see you next week so fast. <laughs> Make your head spin. And I will be ready next I'll week. <laughs> Let's talk about Halloween candy for a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Rough um, go in the old dreamlands there. So the only way this cognitive whatever you called it. What manifests. you just did there, is that how the, that's how that would manifest. The only way it manifests is in spells. Disorder. It does not have any penalty to diplomacy, diplomacy. checks, intimidation checks. No, nope. only uh, spells. When you want to swing your two-handed war hammer, no effect I'll be whatsoever. Fine. Yeah, you'll be fine. You want to swing your two-handed war hammer and say, take that, you fiend, you're fine. That's, that yeah. is, that could have been a lot worse. <laughs> you know, that could have been a lot worse. In hindsight, not so bad. But yeah, anytime you cast a spell, you'll have to, if, if it has verbal components. Uh, maybe there's a spell you can cast that you don't need to use verbal components. I don't know, man. Yeah, but, I gotta uh, dig in. I gotta dig in. We'll say you'll have some time. Um, but yeah, you do see uh, Suki and Xantar <laughs> twitching, and you just imagine like they're going to die. But time moves differently in the dreamlands. Maybe they won't. Maybe they'll survive. But if Bokrug was just easily laying waste like that, he's probably going to find them. Well, we need to wake them up. You want to wake up a sleepwalker? It's very, very dangerous. I mean, no more dangerous than letting them die there. It's true. Can I roll a knowledge check on it? Mm-hmm. Uh, occult? Recall yeah, knowledge I... occultism? Yeah. Uh, Come on. Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> like, Are we still, why is that so terrible? Anymore, right? <laughs> no, you're not stupefied. Oh, uh, doomed is the only thing that carries over. And then, of course, the madness. But where you woke up, Aldo. I'm feeling kind of tired, so I'm going to take a full night's rest. No, right no, Am no. I still wounded? Uh, no, you're not wounded. You're okay. back cool. to full health. I feel just, like... It was just a dream, Eris. I feel like Eris is also watching these two people she doesn't know Twitch and like doesn't understand it and would like to roll something too. Yeah, um, you can uh, roll a cult as well or Arcana. <laughs> I'll roll uh, a cult. I rolled a twenty, a cult. Ooh, natural fifteen, so that's thirty-one a cult. <laughs> I'll roll Arcana to cover our bases. That is a twenty-nine. 29. All right, so Atticus is just struggling here to really get a grip on anything um, from that cognitive disorder. Luckily, his two intelligent companions are able to suss this out, and you think it could be very dangerous. It was my idea. <laughs> I know, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm looking at you, Stamus. Move away, your eyes. stupid, they say. <laughs> um, it is. It could be very dangerous to uh, take them out um, unwillingly. Uh, it could do permanent mental damage to them. So you think one of two things is going to happen. They'll be able to get out and awaken on their own, or they'll die and wake up with a madness. And really the only way to know is next time they're on the show. Do you want to see what happens when we wake them up? It might be something bad. Said the weirdo. Um. <laughs> no, perhaps, perhaps if it carries risk along with it, we let them find their own way out. Xanta is... A king, after all. Yes. You turn you turn around and Ethel is placing a bowl of warm water right next to Ethel, right next to <laughs> Xantar's bed and putting his hand to it. I just thought after that, that we uh, I just what thought we could use a laugh. Like it was a hard day. That's his last clean loincloth, though. <laughs> I mean a joke's a joke, but we all have to live with him. Uh, that's fair. That's fair. Why don't we go to the? Why don't we go over to Suki and do? And we can do it there. I, I just think we could yeah, use a little fine. levity. I, okay. Yeah, of okay, course. Good. Yeah, she's so got laundry. He doesn't. So if you're gonna, she, she's always joke. wet. <laughs> yeah, she's always. Yeah, no, she's. That's established. She's always wet anyway. So <laughs> anyone got a sharpie? We could just draw and write things on Xantar's naked body. It's been done. There's been a lot yeah, of... Yeah, he's pretty <laughs> heavily tattooed. A lot of dicks oh, have been drawn true. on... Oh, oh right. The, the yes. uh, Who is it? Uh, uh, peanut Butter? No. <laughs> Sandwiches? What's his name? <laughs> peanut Butter. There should be a guy... Oh, uh... A um, pancake. 
Not Pancake. No, it's one of the, it's Spin, not Spinny Pie, one of the original crew. Um, no, but I, but Pancake, I believe, is the one who came down. I was like, hey, you guys go to sleep? Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah that's right. <laughs> <laughs> like, I like that guy, Pancake. Did you guys go to sleep? Yeah. <laughs> um, but the one that was drawing dicks the first time around was, uh, was either Finger Lakes or, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Somebody wet, not wet knees. Finger Red lakes, team. isn't that fingers? Oh, Dinky Fuss Tumble. Dinky oh, Fuss Tumble. Dinky. I think he was the one with the sharpie. I think he was the one that was also said was mute, introduced as mute, and then totally <laughs> talked start, later. Because he just didn't want to talk it. to people. He was that like, was, I, was, I was lying. I'm, I'm not. Really <laughs> I just don't like conversation. Uh, the point is, you guys have to have some fun on this boat uh, because it's pretty miserable. So you draw a couple dicks, you put some hands in water. <laughs> Let's talk about the situation in hand here. Um, I'm new here. I didn't know we were doing that. That was in, I hadn't. I forgot. I didn't know that was in, a thing. I just wanted. To, you can do it to me. I, all is fair. No, it's I'm, totally a thing. It's just he is. He is a king. You don't do that to kings. And he only does have the one sort of cloth covering of his genitals. If he gets it wet, then it's he's going to be running around half naked and stinking, and it's just too much. Sure, sure. What does he it's do when practical. he? What does he do when he uh, when he when he washes the loincloth though? Like, what uh, is, well, he just jumps into the river. Like half the time, we're just hauling him up out of the river, and that to him, that's like bath day, laundry day, and like, he'll disappear for uh, many sh shows at a time. And then when we find him, oh, there is there in the river. <laughs> that's as clean as he gets. But we don't know if that's going to happen this time. Like he's lying there, so he doesn't have the opportunity to emerge from water. Sure, sure. Fair enough. <laughs> Atticus is looking at this uh, incredible other landscape that has been cut into the boat uh, from some sort of planar magic, and he wants to know what is happening and what this place is. I have my suspicions as a player, but I want to see if Atticus knows what this is. Can I roll? Yeah, dude. Arcana? Yeah. Yeah. Come on, Atticus, would you know one thing? There we go, 34. <laughs> would you roll 30? 34. 34. Ooh, it was DC 35, but you know what? I'm going to give you some info. <laughs> Damn it! Um, you know from the brief conversation that you had with Eris uh, in Sarnath that she ended up here, I think you said there was like magic gone awry or something, which is pretty common to the area um, which she hailed from, the Mana Wastes. Oh right. Yep. That's just so the, that between the, Geb the, and Nex, then that mm -hmm. that okay. And uh, you know, as she's uh, saying uh, right now, like oh, I didn't know I could just die and wake up. Obviously, doesn't know that uh, they wake up with a madness. But in doing so, and and being a part of your group, it has pulled uh, the area from which she originally went into the dreamlands into the boat and you would think probably somewhere in the mana waste is a chunk of the boat and maybe even Halster. where are the mana waste wow. they are on avistan uh yeah um if you go to a map um Ian, you have that map of galarian ready um uh, with avistan <laughs> and uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, okay, we don't have that ready to go. It's in Garund. It's on the it's on the eastern coast oh, of it's... Garund. Oh, okay. It's in the southern part of the map. It's between the nations of Nex and Geb. These two sort of magical nations that have warred against each other, and the Mana Waster are, are a kind of demilitarized zone between them. Correct me if I'm wrong. I think the new um, six book AP um, Blood Lords. Uh, is Geb starts in Geb? Um, oh, it's an so. area I think Eric was has been. He's really excited that they're going to start uh, exploring. Um, I don't know if that was one of the ones that he came up with at the beginning of the company or not, but uh, yeah, Blood Lords start at least starts in Geb. Spoiler alert: um, It's an undead nation. Right? Yeah, they isn't love an like, undead nation in Paisa, in Paisa, don't they? Who does? Geb is Geb is like undead, and Nex is like magical constructs or something. I there it is. I'm not gonna focus, but it's over here. Yeah, down, down here, and we're all the way up here, right? Yeah, very far away. It's summer in Geb right now. No, I don't. Yeah. Um, oh, by the way, Aldo is freaking out that uh, Halster is gone. This is his best friend, even though he committed horrible crimes and is gone. 
I, he's he's losing his mind that his his friend I didn't play it but that let's imagine I did yeah yeah no that's going to be very startling um, obviously he committed some uh, strange acts on the boat enough so that Skywin was like you're going in the brig to think about this and uh, now this magic has sent him somewhere you hope um after you kind of suss this out, are you going to bed there, Ethel? Are you wiped out? Are people tired? Remember, you, you did this at night, and when you come back, not a lot of time passes. Obviously, it's very unsettling to see Suki and uh, Xantar still suffering, but time moves differently in the dreamland. So do you go to bed? Do you go aboard and start talking to the, the pancake and basement Betty? I mean, I just have an unyielding sense of doom nagging at me. Mm -hmm. um, then I just would like to sleep off. You just want to sleep off that doom. Uh, I got you. Okay, so Ethel goes to sleep. Good night, everybody. I think I've uh, fulfilled my services for the day. Thank you. Good night. Ethel, mercenary, gun for hire. Yeah, thank you. You hear, you hear him crying softly as he finds himself. <laughs> Sad. I think Atticus is going to go back to the books for a little bit. Obviously, it's nighttime, so he can't, like, he needs to go to sleep, but he, he's also, like, he's so keyed up about, I mean, in none of the other situations today, great old ones show up in the dream. And so he's trying to, like, do some research, maybe on whatever the next one may be to see if there's any possibility of that kind of thing happening, in which case, maybe we just skip it. You know what I mean? Like, he's, he's looking to see if the dangers are so insurmountable with uh, with the next one that like there's no point um, and maybe he just does that for an hour or two and then starts like falling asleep into the book and and then turns in you look at the next item on the list item five out of seven only three of these uh, possible gifts left at least the ones that you assume Laos got or at least went after and the next one uh, on the list says a knight Hag Ambassador's Heartstone. Now you know that researching these things has been taking you about a week, sometimes five or six days when you and Aldo really put your heads together and dig into these books. But if you're spending an hour just kind of looking around. Uh, he's just like kind of like, yeah, I think he's in a way skimming for like any mentions of gods of that level. You know what I mean? Like right now, just to see if there's any mention of anything that powerful, because he knows something is off with him and he can't describe it right now. As you, you know, start to figure out where Lowell's did his research, in the hour that you spend, you are able to um, sort of cross-reference his notes around to at least know what books you need to dig into. And those books are, t and maybe the title alone will let you know, like, are we dealing with more great old ones here? One is called uh, Atop the Valley's Soul. The other one's called The Falling Silk. And the last one is called In Admiration of Keeping Packs. <laughs> wow. Okay, so he starts pulling this like syllabus together basically for him and Aldo on the next day. Aldo stays up too. Aldo stays up for a while going through books, but he's not looking about that. He's looking for any sort of history, any any other instances of this kind of transposition that took place between what happened to Halster and Eris. Because as as he stays up as long as he can until he just until he passes out from exhaustion, like he's going to stay up trying to research that to see if there's any way to get back, get his friend back. Yeah, and you. Uh... We just see you falling asleep with a book on your chest that's like, um, you know, a history of wild magic. Hmm. What about our newcomer here, Eris? So I think that she's been sitting on like that little border of um, her world and this boat because she's afraid of water. <laughs> um, and I guess before someone falls asleep, um, she's like, so you can just go into the dream world. You know how to control that. You can. 
it's pancake and he says i i, I don't really know how it works i just <laughs> i've really just got here you should ask that guy and you see atticus like just about to go to sleep pancake goes back up <laughs> you mouse man um you can just go into the I'm dream sorry, world whenever you want no not whenever we want there is a quite difficult ritual that must take place it is it takes the utmost concentration needs multiple people working together as one we fail it quite often but some days we are able to punch through the veil into the land of dreams that how did you get there in the first place well that must have been my problem I haven't been trying to do this with friends oh I mean, yes I was just trying kind of winging it with my incantations if I can be transparent where, where did you study this is how this happened where did you hmm? study your magics how did you learn the the Baba Yaga gives me all of my magical abilities through my egg here. And she lifts up her poppet. Oh, of course, your patron. Yes, of course. You are granted the powers, but at what cost? What must you do for this patron? She's just like still holding up her poppet and you just see her chicken hands. <laughs> She's like, what do you mean? And... Maybe you can also see the mouth and her neck a little bit, like underneath her cloak. I just... This boat really uneases me, but... I think that I can eat more children if I can get into their dreams. And you all <laughs> can get into their dreams. And I might need to... Like... Give a little, take a little type of thing. May I ask you something? And mm -hmm. feel free to not answer. Why did you put yourself into the service of Baba Yaga? I didn't have a choice. I was, I'm, I'm mutated. And it, Do I, you I remember a life before this? Before this yeah. mutation? Yeah, there, 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 there was one. Um, but it's not real anymore. This is so much more real. More These real. wants and desires and my powers and the way I am transforming even now. Mm. Some of it is random. Some of it I can control. Yes. I think we have some things in common. Would you happen to have room for, say, a mutated flesh warp and a poppet <laughs> on your boat? <laughs> well, uh, the captain is very fond of taking on literally anyone <laughs> come across. <laughs> so I think you have found a home here. You're most welcome. That is, of course, unless your intention is not to make friends. It seems like I have to make friends in order to access this dream world. So yes. that is my intention. Friendship in, in friendship. and of itself is not so... <laughs> yes, you don't need friendship, but you do need cooperation. How about that? I Put can that do that. Mm -hmm. What I, do you think you could uh, add in terms of the, mm, the pieces of the ritual? And he'll then go into like a description about what the ritual is like. And, uh, you know, so mechanically, uh, we could, you know, whatever the flavor is, but mechanically it's like... Would you be occultism role, religion role, arcana role? Occultism would be your, your best? Yeah, her thing is occultism. She also has a little bit of religion, a little bit more arcana, but her thing mainly is occultism. Is she a master of occultism? Um, what is she a master of? Uh, yes. Master of occultism. Good. Very cool. Master. Right. Master, master of occultism. With <clears throat> her poppet. Oh, master of poppets. 
Master of Puppets. <laughs> oh, thank you, Kate. You just there named it me is. Up. There it is. Oh. Um, oh, it saved uh, me an hour. Well, I think then you will be uh, very valuable in the ritual, and I think it may be even more successful now that you are part of it. Um, I'm very tired. I'm going to go to bed now. Um, and that was Joe too. So. <laughs> Good night, everybody. <laughs> Great seeing you. <laughs> Oddly enough, my character's feelings mirror my own. In this mirror moment. my own. <laughs> um. Yeah, I just, I just don't know. It's like it's very interesting, you know, like a, a flesh warp patron of Baba Yaga. I think Atticus, more than any other character I've ever played, would be more like inclined to like partner up work more learn more um he is very interested in where powers come from and how you're able to manifest them uh and doesn't matter how dark or twisted they are as long as it makes you powerful that's very interesting to him mm. yeah you have to study over and over again yeah so is and, it like, are you like jealous of people that are just given the powers yeah like, like that's where that comes from it's like what did you have to do to get it like you didn't do shit <laughs> she just gave it to you uh what you know? What was your life before? Are you miserable now? Oh, you're not miserable now either. God damn it! Everything's working out <laughs> in your favor. Like uh, these kind of things are, because I think all of the study he never got as far as he wanted to, and then it was once he delved into occultism and started digging into these dark rituals and these forbidden arts, he became more powerful. And so, that's to me is becoming really the essence of this character is his willingness to use the dark magic to make himself more powerful. Ethel, you were the first to go to bed. You were seen sobbing in the corner as you sobbed yourself to sleep. What do we say sobbing? Do we have to say sobbing? Um, weeping. There was a distinct well, weeping sound coming from your general direction. Uh, blubbering? Uh, Did you blubbering. blubbering? There was no blubbering, all right? <laughs> Why did you and your wife get divorced? <laughs> Listen. <laughs> this is getting heavy. I don't think we have time. I don't think we have the time to get into uh, uh, into it completely. Uh, uh, but basically, my wife came to me and said, I don't, uh, you know, in so many words said, you're a merchant of death. And I don't want the kids to be around that. And I don't love you anymore. Tales old as time. And uh, yeah, there's just no coming back from that. Like, what do you say in response to that? Honestly. Was there a time when you were happy? I was happy. I, I was happy. I, I loved her. I, I still love her. I know I respect, of course, boundaries set up in the divorce proceedings and her wishes. I still love her. How many children do you have? Two. Too. Why am I having this conversation in character with the game master? I am baffled by it. I don't know what is happening right <laughs> Were now. You, hello, uh, hello, God. It's me, Ethel. Was your who, who, what was your oldest child a, a son or a daughter? Oldest child uh, is a son, also named Ethel. Okay, <laughs> Ethel Junior. No, no, he's Ethel the Ethel the fourth. Um, were you in the room when Ethel was born? Uh, yeah, we listen. We're not rich people. We have a three-room hut. I was trying to make a little something so I could open up the woodworking shop. The woodworking shop was was that my, my dollhouse furniture shop. That was a solution I proposed to get out of the game so we could repair our marriage and work on it together for the kids. So maybe we see this, uh, the beginnings of this shop. You know, you haven't fully gone into this yet, um, but we see little knickknacks maybe it's just a hobby at this point but it's in the how back of your head. dare you knickknacks <laughs> they're it's Nick still in hobby knacks. form i mean they're exquisite <laughs> but they're it's not a business yet. this isn't a business and we see you so i get uh, enough from my ex-wife all right i need to get it from you too <laughs> it's a very cute little hobby but it's not a business i'm sorry uh, i'm out um <laughs> it's ethel on shark tank <laughs> we see you, and we just see a couple of these beautiful, exquisite pieces, homemade chess pieces, everything. And you're in the room with your wife as she's giving birth to uh, 
we assume, your your first son, Ethel. And uh, Ethel is there a before. doctor there? No, there's a midwife. midwife. What, 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 what world are you living in? I'm living in the can, fantasy world. Clearly, you couldn't afford a, an actual doctor, so you have a midwife there uh, who's doing it. And you're, are you holding your wife's hand and really like coaching her through this? This is pre like I, I don't love you anymore. I can't be with you. You're a killer. Please leave me. You're this is this is. You don't even have an inkling that anything is wrong. It sounds like you didn't even when she bro divorced you, but you're with her and you're having this moment and it's just, it's beautiful. You're you are afraid, but you're also, uh, you've stared death in the face. So you're, you're able to steal yourself and be that rock for I her. I fought in wars and this was scarier. And you're just, <laughs> you're holding her tight. You're squeezing her as hard as she's squeezing you and the midwife is like, it's coming. It's coming, and you're you're so joyous. You just want this to be over with, and then you hear the midwife go, "Oh God, oh God!" And the midwife collapses to the floor, and you look and you see coming out of your wife is the face of Bokrog. Just oh no! no. <laughs> and you wake up <laughs> in a cold sweat. And your madness is, you have night terrors. Oh, oh no. Wow. You're not gonna be able to sleep? Every time you attempt to sleep, you fail. And you are permanently fatigued. Oh. Until this goes away. Oh my God. <laughs> oh my oh, that's God. That's horrible. And we'll see you next week. Oh, oh God, that is a rough <laughs> note to end on. That's, that's truly awful. Oh, oh no. <laughs> It's so bad. <laughs> oh God! Good night, everybody. Good night, Thanks everybody. Good night. Out. Good night. Everyone, so good to see you. Well. Yeah. <laughs> Sleep well. Sleep well.